Goose, you coming to say hi? Hi, I was thinking my microphone. Okay, this is probably a really good angle of you. Anyways, hello everyone. <laughs> Today, ow. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, today we're back with everyone's favorite Australian teen mermaid drama show, H2O, Just at Charlotte. So if you didn't see my last video, that, that didn't work how I thought it would. Um, <laughs> what is happening? Anyways, if you didn't see my last video, I recently talked about season one of H2O, and today we are going to be talking about season two. So if you want to refresh yourself on the plot of season one before this, I definitely recommend. But also, um, this is a show about teen mermaids, so if you don't want to do that, I honestly don't blame you. Now, when I watched season two of H2O originally, I was like 10 years old, and for some godforsaken reason, uh, I chose to use like this the one $25 iTunes gift card I had to buy all of season two on iTunes so I could watch it on my iPod Nano. And it was like the version of the iPod Nano that was like dummy thick. And the screen for the iPod Nano was two inches wide. Don't take this out of context. And I might as well have waited a decade to watch season two on an Apple Watch. Steve Jobs really just let me purchase this and then dipped a few years later. And I would say that this was um, highway robbery of 10 year old me. But this is what you had to do back in the day to watch high quality content. I'm not gonna lie, I had the time of my life watching season two on my little iPod. Like, I was obsessed even more than season one. Season two of H2O is great in a lot of ways. It has some problems. I still think overall, it's a good series. It introduces a consistent, slow burn antagonist who children then and today honestly love to hate. We learn a lot more about Ricky in this season and she was always my favorite, so I appreciated that. And they also, I think, got a bigger budget because there's a lot more CGI action sequences, which again, looked stunning on my two inch screen. But I don't want to give all of my takes just yet. So let me just walk you through episodes 27 through 52 of H2O Just Dead Water. Episode 1, Stormy Weather. Alright, it is that time of the month. It is the full moon, baby. And you know I love Lewis. But his hair in this episode, really this entire season, is rough. I think the mermaids have somehow, like, absorbed any moisture source that could have saved his hair. Like, that's really my only explanation for what's happening here. Also, Cleo and Kim's parents divorce off screen, and we never see the mom again. And I really just want to know the tea on that. I wish they had delved more in, into this backstory, even though I'm sure the, the mom actress just couldn't be bothered to come back for the second season, which go off. But this time, all of the girls get moon drunk. For some never really explained reason, uh, this gives them like 10 times the power that they had previously, and so now they can control the weather on top of already being able to control the water. And they also fully just assault Lewis while they're full moon drunk. Um, don't know how Lewis survived that, but, you know, given how he acts in this season, I'd, I'd say it's some karma. Some early karma. Episode 2, Control. Now this is the episode where we meet the one, the only, Charlotte. So Charlotte is the new girl in school and she has her eye on Lewis. Suspicious. Charlotte is a controversial figure in the H2O community. To this day, the actress who plays her still gets comments on her Instagram reminding her how much children hated her character. And I must say, even if you're just commenting like, OMG, I used to hate you as a kid. <laughs> Even though it's not mean, I'm sure it's still <laughs> incredibly annoying just to hear that on a daily basis. Hi, editing me here. Something I, I honestly can't believe I forgot to include this in the main video, and I think it's important enough to include this crappy insertion. So the actress who played Charlotte, you may notice, is like a couple sizes bigger than the three main girls who are like actually supermodels. <laughs> It's kind of ridiculous. Because of that, and because Charlotte was such a controversial character, the actress who played Charlotte experienced a lot of horrific comments about her body, and it led to just a lot of issues with her body image, her confidence, her own mental health. And so I don't think that anybody in this comment section would be making comments like that, but I just, I do think it's worth pointing out that this was like a 16 year old girl who just like was doing a job and even 15 years later she still gets comments about how she looked when she was a child and I just think that's that's really messed up honestly that's all I have to say on that I'm gonna link an interview oh I'm blanking on his name but he's like the H2O guy on YouTube I watched a lot of his videos 
um, before doing this series, he did an interview with Brittany that I think is really interesting and gives a lot of good insights into just like her mindset going into this role and then like just the wave of backlash that she just had no way of being prepared for. Even if you don't like Charlotte, that's fine. You can do that. Be nice to Brittany, okay? She is just a woman who did a project for two months when she was 16. Like, she doesn't need to be involved in this discussion, okay? All right, thought I'd add that. Back to the video. Let's all just like leave Brittany alone. That is her name, <laughs> leave her alone. But also, um, this is probably gonna be a controversial opinion. My rewatch turned me into a Charlotte apologist. And I know, I know that is a bold statement to make, but just hear me out, okay? What I didn't remember is like, do like the first 20 seasons, even though Charlotte is sort of being built up to be the villain of the season, she's really just trying her best to be Lewis's friend, to be the girl's friends, and they are so <laughs> mean to her <laughs> at every single turn. And honestly, this is kind of my villain origin story on top of Charlotte's origin story. But this is when we start to see scenes of her trying to be friends with Lewis. She gives him her like laptop battery while he's doing research. Wow, I'm actually researching my miraculous natural phenomena. Oh, I love all that. And there's even a cute scene where she teaches him how to paint. It's like the Japanese proverb. If you want to fly like a butterfly, don't flap like a crow. Charlotte, you were the best. I am, why? I've got to go, I'll talk to you later. And Cleo is also like on something, especially for this first half of the second season. She is really not about Lewis, even though they just got together at like the end of season one. And to be fair, Lewis is being a lot, but you still have to appreciate my patron saint, Cleo. Even though we just spent an entire season building up their relationship, they break up and I was still weaning off my effector when I watched this episode and this montage it did make me cry. I was not in the mental state for a sad montage like this, okay? Don't judge me. All right, episode three, the one that got away. Zane is back and um, because they, at the end of the last season, pretended to lose their powers, and I guess it's never explicitly stated, but I guess Ricky and Zane also broke up when that happened. He's back and he's back to thinking that they're not mermaids and they're broken up, even though this is obviously incredibly temporary because he still knows that Ricky is not like other girls. I like being a regular girl. I don't believe you. What? There's nothing regular about you. Here, on me. What's wrong? And at the end of this episode, they get back together and he finds out that she's a mermaid again. So you have to wonder why they even bothered putting in this plot in the first place. They could have just been together, but whatever. Also, because Zane's trying to get Ricky back, he fakes his death for attention. Looks like he learned something from Mrs. Chatham. Lewis and Cleo, like I said, broke up in the last episode, and Charlotte is just hanging out with Lewis, trying to help him with his little weather device, and Cleo is just being real, real petty. I did not remember this from my first watching of the show. Sometimes I think I was the only thing keeping her together. <laughs> the only thing keeping her together? Wanda, my weather and nautical data analyzer. Just like such an odd choice, because Cleo was always, I felt like, the most like sweet and like level-headed one of the three. And so it just feels especially out of character to have her be like so petty and mean towards Charlotte in like the first half of the season because Cleo and Lewis are broken up. Lewis is allowed to hang out with Charlotte as a friend, as a girlfriend, whatever. And Cleo is on that like toxic ex thing where she doesn't want Lewis to date anybody else. But even though Lewis is just like, if you want to get back together, we can get back together. And Cleo's like, no, no, no. That was better. A little better? It wasn't good. I didn't say it was good. So since Cleo is in her toxic era, she finds out that there's no record of Charlotte at Charlotte's old school. And it's apparently because a fire burned down the school that was started by a mysterious person in the art room. One of two personality traits Charlotte has is that she likes art. So I do have to say, it's kind of, <laughs> it is a little suspicious. I don't, I don't blame Cleo for that one. But then it stops being justified when Cleo steals Charlotte's diary and then finds a picture of her kissing a boy for a play and goes like full on Rachel Bloom, 
craziest girlfriend territory. And again, despite Cleo being really cringy this episode, Louis still asks if Cleo wants to just get back together, and she says no. We love creating all our own problems. Episode four, Fire and Ice. So in this episode, Emma's family likes Ricky better than Emma because Ricky is objectively better. That was weird. That's total junk. Em, what not? Yeah, what not? I say that while I'm wearing, I feel like a very Emma-inspired shirt today. But Emma's mom gets this art piece, and I actually thought it was bong when she pulled it out. And it gets destroyed later in the episode. I think it was for the best. If I'm being honest. So what's in the box? My latest acquisition from Casa Cristal. I'm sure Emma's told you I'm a very keen collector. She has, but I'm not gonna hold her against you. What do you think? It's the jewel in the crown of my collection. Mum, it's absolutely hideous. But I guess that's what makes it up, right? <laughs> Really, this episode only matters because this is when we see Cleo in her best top ever. I love this top. I wanted it when I was 10, and I want it now. It's so cute. It looks so good on her. And anytime I Google it, I can't figure out where they got it as if it would still be available now. I still want it. If anyone has this, send it to me. <laughs> episode 5, Hocus Pocus. All right, this episode is actually nuts because Lewis finds a mermaid book that tells him all about these extra powers that the girls have unlocked, and they make a potion that can grant any wish if they just put it on their skin and they end up messing up the recipe so like the algae gets goes crazy and they have to get rid of it but this book and this potion is never mentioned on the show again and can you just imagine like if this was sold at lush i would be first in line i don't understand why they just threw in this crazy plot device and then never brought it up again cleo you were right my wish came true really my fish finder it's been playing up when you asked me to make a wish, I wished I had a new one. You wished for a fish finder. Dad, aren't there more important things in life than fish? Well, like what? Like mum, of course. I just thought if you could have one wish, you'd wish for mum to come back. OK, girls. Come here. And to be honest with you, I'd love to have her back. But she'd still be unhappy. I guess. But what about your happiness, Dad? He's happy. Aren't you, Dad? You bet. I got you two, right? Right. Right. Episode 6, Pressure Cooker. Cleo sees her dad on what she thinks is a date with what turns out to be Charlotte's mom, who looks suspiciously like Hillary Clinton, but Australian. Lewis and Charlotte go fishing. Should have been me. I mean Cleo. But also look at our cottage court queen making this little picnic for him. Like Charlotte, I would have had so much fun on this date. It's being underappreciated. But Charlotte and Hillary Clinton go over to Cleo's house to meet her dad and their family. And while they're cooking, Charlotte does get flour all over Cleo, which I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that would be my villain origin story too. It's not that I don't like you. I do. You do. I knew it. Cleo, this isn't what it looks like. I didn't realize Dom was your dad. I never would have come if I did. So you knew about my dad and your mom? Sure, it's no big deal. She's done this kind of thing before. It turns out it was all a misunderstanding. Cleo's dad isn't dating Hillary Clinton. She's a chef and Cleo's dad is a fisherman, so they're trying to do a business deal. But of course, they didn't make that clear to his children because it's way more fun antics if they think it's a date. Whoa. And again, in defense of Charlotte, Charlotte, point blank, asks Cleo if it's okay for her to talk to Lewis, and if it bothers her, she'll stop. And Cleo's like, no, I, I need to stop. I can't do it. Um, but Cleo says it's fine. I know that you used to go out, but we've been spending some time together. Yeah, I've noticed. So I was wondering if that was going to be a problem. Lewis and I are just friends. Excellent. I can't defend you on this, Cleo. You can't, can't keep making me do this. I can't go back down there. You don't have to. We'll just say you're not feeling well and wait for them to leave. Are you kidding? You're just gonna lie down and take this? Let that woman steal your dad and let her daughter hit on Lewis without putting up a fight? What can I do? You're a mermaid! Need any help? Girls, you're gonna love this. Ah! 
And again, this is why I want Ricky as a friend. Messy behavior, but I love it. Episode seven, hot water. Cleo gets fired for feeding a dolphin as if she hasn't been doing that, I think, the whole series. And so Lewis takes her job and whatever they use as fake ice cream in the scene, I'm just not convinced. <laughs> is that mashed potatoes? But Emma and Ricky somehow think that if they sabotage Lewis enough to get Lewis fired, Cleo will be able to get her job back. And so of course they break into the dolphin tank to sort of mess with Lewis, which doesn't work because he, one, immediately sees him, and of course the dolphin escapes. I mean, I know why she likes Lewis, we've all been there, but I also have to question why Charlotte likes Lewis, because anytime, anytime he interacts with her, he's complaining about Cleo, or he ditches her to hang out with Cleo and her friends. Like, he will drop Charlotte at the drop of a hat, and it is, like, painfully obvious that he just does not care about her, and like, I get it, Charlotte, I've been there. Um, but oh, it's just, it's so painful to watch as an adult. But Emma and Ricky have to go get the dolphin back to put in the fishbowl, and also, I believe this is Ronnie that escapes, who, if you'll remember, in season one was a wild caught dolphin who wasn't adjusting well to captivity, but all of a sudden they say that he's been in captivity his whole life and wouldn't be able to survive in the ocean. And Let's be real, if this was real life, Ronnie would be um, big old dead <laughs> if he just swam out into the open ocean with no previous exposure. But they get him back, Lewis ends up quitting, Cleo gets her job back. Episode 8, Wrong Side of the Tracks. This episode starts with Nate taking like a plate logo thing off of some guy's motorbike. I have no idea what it is because I don't know anything about bikes, but rude nonetheless. Zane gives Ricky an iPod Nano, which H2O don't re-traumatize me. <laughs> Zane drops Ricky off at what? He thinks is her house, but it turns out that Ricky is lying, and where she actually lives is, of course, with the guy from earlier who Nate and Zane already have some beef with. In this episode, Charlotte's not really in it, but she is on her messy shit when she is, and I love that. Uh, she gives Cleo Lewis a jacket and is like, oh, can you give that back for me? Petty, but honestly, I support it. And you know, to Emma's credit, I don't really like Emma's character, but she does give some sound advice to Ricky in this scene, so I'll include that. We're just so, so, so different. It doesn't matter if you're different, but if you can't be yourself around him, then you've got the problem. Zane finds out that Ricky is lying about where she lives, and he's like, I don't care if you're poor, I love you anyways. And then, of course, Ricky's dad happens to walk by while they're making out. Yikes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Zane tried to return the thing that Nate stole before he even knew that Ricky and this guy were related. So there are some Zane points for you. I am also a Zane apologist. Ricky introduces her dad to all of her friends and Zane. And in the very last scene, you see Lewis giving Cleo his jacket. And again, this ending made me cry. I don't really know if it's fair to say this ending made me cry or if me weaning off my antidepressants made me cry, but I cried regardless. <laughs> Episode 9, Riding for a Fall. Lewis makes fuel out of compost, and he's worried about being beaten in like a science competition by a self-starting toaster. And I'm like, Lewis, I think you just solved the energy crisis. <laughs> and he gets into this whole awkward thing where he in initially invites Cleo, Cleo says no, and then Charlotte kind of invites herself to it. I thought it's going to be a great night. Being picked up in a limousine and everything. Never been in a limo. That was a hint, Lewis. That's the moment you should ask me to come with you. Unless you've already got someone to go with. I don't actually. Great, that's settled then. Through a bunch of wacky shenanigans and very poor communication, both of the girls think that they're going and wear the same dress to go with him. Comment who wore it better. But yeah, Lewis, Lewis and communication just like don't jive very well this season. But what's important about this episode is this is where Emma meets her new love interest, Ash. Elliot is going through his horse girl phase, and Ash just so happens to be the hot riding instructor. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool name. You're the riding instructor? Sure am. Is that a problem? No. I mean, I just thought you'd be a little older. Been riding since I was four, so that gives me about 14 years experience. Great. Ash is definitely better than Byron, especially in his acting ability, but I also did not remember how incredibly rude Emma is to Ash, and for like no good reason at all. He's fantastic! I can't wait till I can do that! I get too excited, he's just putting on a show. And then Emma almost 
kills his horse? Would you mind taking Rebel out to the yards? He needs to graze. Sure, I got it. And make sure you take him to the front yards. There's lots of weeds around that he shouldn't eat. I got it. Come on, Rebel. I'll be right there. What's wrong? There's a problem with Rebel. Sounds pretty bad. Um, the horse is fine. Emma is able to cure the horse. But yeah, Emma is just like especially unbearable in this episode. Upon my rewatch, I also have to really question what Ash and Emma saw on each other because they seem to truly despise one another and not in like a cute enemies to lovers kind of way. Like it feels personal. Episode 10, Miss the Boat. Turns out Cleo is failing biology. And Lewis starts studying for Cleo, which- Why don't you take me out on your boat? Charlotte, I'm so sorry, I can't. I have study to do. You don't study biology, you do physics and chem. I just need to brush up on it sometimes to help other students to study. Like who? Cleo, actually. She should be calling me any minute. What is Charlotte supposed to say to that when she sees it? And Charlotte volunteers to tutor Cleo, which, yeah, I do have to question her motives here because I am a Charlotte apologist, but really what motive would she have for helping Cleo if she's not getting paid other than to keep Cleo away from Lewis and sort of get in there around the side. But I mean, maybe it looks really good on a college application? It doesn't really seem like Charlotte teaches Cleo anything. She really just gives her a bunch of homework to do and then hops off to hang out with Lewis. And while Charlotte is over at Cleo's house helping her study, Cleo's like, oh, you forgot this, and pulls up the drawings, and I... Listen, Charlotte's a very talented artist. No comment, no further comment. Also, Charlotte takes Lewis on another picnic date, and she just happens to bring a chest of her dead grandma stuff with her, you know, as you do. And it turns out the trunk is full of these old drawings of Mako Island, and so Charlotte wants Lewis to take her to Mako Island so that they can do more sketches. I'm sure nothing weird will happen there. Honestly, this whole spying sequence, I'm just embarrassed all around for everyone involved. What are you doing? I'm cold. It's about 28 degrees. Charlotte, I think now would be a good time to remember that we're just... This scene makes my soul evaporate. Charlotte! Charlotte, there's something I need to tell you. Charlotte, find someone who will appreciate your cottage core realness. But also, Cleo, once again, cannot communicate, so... Kind of evens out on the cringiness. Wanted to see you. I figured maybe we needed to talk. When I was out there with Charlotte, it, it probably looked different from how it really was. You don't have to explain. I understand. Cleo! I heard you did really well in your supplementary exam. Yeah, great, actually. My best mark ever. Aren't you going to thank me? Thanks. For everything. So, are you still going out tonight? Yeah. I guess so. Great. In over our heads. Charlotte shows up to Emma's house and drags Lewis out. Again, babe. Don't take this kind of treatment. But the B plot for this episode is it turns out that there's this rare antique that happened to get sunk to the bottom of the ocean and there's this huge reward for it. And so Ricky decides that she wants to get it so she can help her dad pay the bills, but instead of just telling her friends that, she pretends that there isn't a reward and that she's just really into the history. Don't have a guy for it. Don't underestimate yourself. You can be very convincing. He gets back. Also, this is the first time we start to see some trouble. Emma calls Lewis on Cleo's phone, and then Charlotte hangs it up before Lewis can see. Which, I don't know how he misses his iconic ringtone, but getting a little suspicious. But anyways, because Ricky doesn't communicate, she ends up trying to get the antique on her own, and Ricky just gets her world rocked. <laughs> I'll give her the magic excuse, but oh my god, she should have been big dead. Louis stitches Charlotte again, which we all knew this was gonna happen. What? I've got her out of the water. She's breathing, but she's not moving. I need you guys to get here now. It's Ricky, she's been hurt. Where are you going? With them, they need me. What about me? We're meant to be together, and you're always chasing after them. 
Is that why you turned my phone off? Oh, we were having a great time. I didn't want them interrupting. It was important. They survived. And Phoebe really gave her all in this scene. Can you please? Emma, do something. Right. Ricky, come on, please. Oh, wake up. It's not doing anything. Also, I'm pretty sure he's worn this in other episodes, but this is the first time I was like painfully aware that Zane is wearing a leather bracelet. That's a choice. But they give it the reward and I'll hug. Well, episode 12, Fish Fever. I think this is my least favorite episode of the entire series. It's so weird and it makes even less sense than this series usually does. So the episode starts, Emma finds a coral and she cuts her finger on it and she decides to give it to Cleo and Cleo puts a goldfish in with the saltwater coral. That can't work, right? But Hector sure is a mood. Hector? Hector? You're such a god. Anyways, this is really filler episode plot. Emma gets infected by that coral. Of course, the side effects of the infection are it makes her eat a lot of fish and swim in public. Side note, Lewis is me at theme parks. I have my ride itineraries down to the minute. I do not mess around with that. Where are you going? Oh, don't take too long. I've got a bit of a schedule I'd like to stick to. Schedule? There's lots of rides. And if we want to go on all of them in one day, we need to stick to the plan. Once again, Lewis straight up ditches Charlotte on a date Episode 13, Moonwalker. Cleo's family is camping during the full moon on Mako Island. And so her idea to protect herself, or I guess the group's idea, is to also invite Ricky, Emma, and Lewis. I don't know how this is remotely keeping Cleo safe, but messy, I love it. Because Lewis is gaslighting Charlotte, Charlotte also decides to invite herself. But I want you to know that I am here for you guys, not her. Lewis, can we get a hand over here, please? Be there in a second. Coming! Did you hear that story Cleo told? Oh, don't believe a word of it, Kim. We're totally safe here. What was that? Time to go back. Charlotte, justice for Charlotte. Lewis also gives the girls sunglasses, which are meant to block out the moon, but they're useless because the girls immediately take them off when someone calls their name. Kim gets scared and wakes up Cleo. Lewis has gone too. I don't, I don't care. Sure you do. What do you think they're getting up to? Go to bed. Don't you care, Cleo? They're probably hooking up. They're probably doing it right now, Cleo. Why don't you go see Cleo? Aren't you worried? Aren't you worried about that, Cleo? And of course, Cleo immediately gets moonstruck. Are we surprised? And not too long after that, Emma and Ricky also take off the sunglasses because they apparently serve no purpose. They get moonstruck as well. And they sort of indirectly end up leading Charlotte to the moon pool during a full moon. So the water starts bubbling and getting all magical and Charlotte reaches out her hand for it. But Emma freezes the water before Charlotte can get in. And we get this weird continuity thing because in all the other episodes where they get moonstruck, they can't remember the next day. But for some reason, after this, they're like, Oh, Charlotte touched the moon pool. What if, what if she's a mermaid? And Lewis is like, I got this. <laughs> I mean, y'all, you're in public. What if she was a mermaid? What then? What was the plan with this? Also, Lewis is just a dick to his girlfriend again. Are we surprised? Episode 14, Get Off My Tail. Ash gets hired at, as the manager of the Juice Net Cafe over Emma even though he's never worked there. And he also gets picked over this other random woman we've never seen before. So yeah, that's some baloney. I'm, I get why you're upset, Emma. And he starts making all these crazy changes and he decides to make the theme of the cafe basketball, which can you imagine trying to eat a smoothie and then just like whack, gets you in the head? Because I know that would happen to me. At the end of the episode, Ash fires Emma because Emma keeps complaining about how stupid he is in front of him and constantly undermining him even though he's the supervisor and then even though they've spent this entire episode and their entire on-screen relationship arguing ricky is just like wouldn't you be such a cute couple straight culture i guess episode 15 irresistible zane finds out that whale droppings make mermaids horny and lewis is like i don't know if i believe that as if they don't 
already live in a universe where mermaids exist. Another filler, filler episode, but the point is the girls all go horny for Nate because he gets like whale dropping perfume. I mean, look at Nate. The guy has no brains, no sensitivity, and he's surrounded. What? Emma's all over him in the juice bar. And Ricky. And Cleo. Now I can give you all my attention. See you then. Episode 16, Double Trouble. Once again, Lewis is a terrible boyfriend. Come round, bring a DVD. And I was thinking of dyeing my hair bright green. Or better yet, just shave it all off. What do you think? Lewis, hello. Hmm? Yeah, no, I think it, it sounds good. For some reason, Elliot thinks that Lewis is the guy, like the relationship king, and asks him for advice. And Lewis tells Elliot that if the girl he likes ignores him, that means that she's in love with him. But really, why is there this weird thing where when kids have crushes, we all tell them that if they're like, treat you like garbage, that means that they're into you? Like, can we not perpetuate this for, for our youth? Someone was really mean to my kid, and they're just like, oh, he just has a crush on, on your kid. I, would, I wouldn't take that. I'd kill the child. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I wouldn't have children. But it turns out Elliot has a crush on Kim and he buys her gum to win her love and the gum costs $19. Australia. Is this what you spend your money on instead of healthcare? And Kim starts girl bossing Elliot, getting him to do her math homework and buy her a bunch of stuff. And Cleo's dad of course does the Cleo dad thing of like threatening violence against this small boy. Not so fast. Going on a date with one of my daughters. It's a very serious thing, young man. You treat her right, or your life will be about as miserable as a hunk of fish bait. Got it? So Elliot and Kim end up going on a date, and because they're very small children, Lewis and Cleo end up chaperoning them, so it's kind of like they're on a date as well, but they're not. And we get this cute little montage of Kim just ringing Elliot for all he's got. Elliot buys her that Ikea bear that y'all are so obsessed with on TikTok. You know who I mean, the <laughs> jungle, jungle skog, skog, yeah, it's a bear. But Elliot has had enough and he says, Kim, if we want this relationship to work, we have to treat each other like equals. And that means I go on this ride by myself. And Kim's reaction to this is to just throw the bear into the water. Cleo is also near the water and gets splish splashed by accident, so she turns into a mermaid. But luckily, Lewis hops in, gets the bear, and they hold hands underwater. Anyways, Ellie and Kim break up, but again, Charlotte wasn't here for this, so she didn't see any of this, but if I was her, <laughs> I wouldn't be too happy. Episode 17, Moonstruck. Full moon, full moon, baby. Ash asks Emma out. Um, and again, since it's the night of the full moon, Emma says no. But if there's one thing Ash doesn't respect, it's a woman's boundaries. He shows up anyways. And for some reason, Ricky and Cleo are both just like, why don't you just tell him you're a mermaid? You know how we haven't told our parents and how you and Ash aren't even officially dating? Why not just tell him? And then when they get moonstruck, they keep trying to reveal that Emma's a mermaid. And then Emma gets moonstruck, and so she wants to reveal that she's a mermaid. But luckily, Lewis comes in, saves the day. Ash doesn't know the secret yet. And then at the end, Ash and Emma kiss in the cafe and everyone claps like it's a fucking fake Tumblr story. <laughs> Episode 18, the heat is on. More importantly, the top is back. Anyway, Zane is sticking around and he accidentally spills juice on Emma. And so Zane kind of acts like a dick to Ash to keep Ash distracted while Emma goes to dry herself off. And then it becomes like this weird thing where like the girls are fighting, the boys are fighting. Um, Zane. Ricky said you wanted to talk. Well, yes, but with just Ricky. I wanted you both to come to talk. I thought we could work things out, but you weren't supposed to bring your boyfriends. You know, I've seen you talk before. What's that? Loud. How's this? Stop it! Stop it! Emma and Ricky have like a little hand battle. Like... So scary. But they end up forgetting that Cleo has set up this whole like anniversary thing because it's the one year anniversary of them becoming mermaids. And Lewis helped Cleo set up. And of course, because Lewis is again, terrible boyfriend, he <laughs> forgets that he had a date with Charlotte at the same time and shows up late. Eventually the girls remember and they go back with Cleo and we get to see a bunch of cute pictures of them reminiscing. All right, episode 19, 
The Gracie Code Part 1. Just so you know, it's from episode 19 to the finale, bananas. The most insane stuff I've, I ever saw as a child on television. Not on television, on my two inch iPod nano screen, <laughs> but you get what I mean. Lewis is studying the magnetic field and no one is interested, but I'm interested. I have a lot of questions. But he finds out that 50 years ago, some guy named Max Hamilton studied Mako Island. And for some reason, the guy who um, plays Max Hamilton really reminds me of Gene from Arrested Development. You don't get up, I just find the supplies because I'm a private detective. Oh, Gene! And the scene where he's later spying on them did not help that impression. So at first he claims Lewis is mistaken, he doesn't know what he's talking about, and then he sees that Cleo is wearing necklaces, and it turns out that Max actually made them way back in the day for his girlfriend Gracie, who is the third mermaid we haven't really heard about up until now. So we find out through a flashback that the way Max found out that Gracie and the two other girls were mermaids was he just like followed them one day and showed up. I don't know, it's just like so creepy that it like wasn't their choice to tell him and he just sort of like barged in on them. He's suspicious that Cleo is a mermaid and he just goes about it again in the most creepy way and just like splashes Cleo so that she has no choice but to reveal to him that she's a mermaid. Cleo. What's going on, Lois? It hasn't changed. You know this place? I wish to come here all the time. It's quite magical, the water here. Sorry. I don't know, I just get weird vibes. I guess they couldn't get Miss Chatham back for this season because Max is like now the go-to person from this era and I just, I don't like him. He creeps me out. But we do start to see a little bit more about the dynamic between the three original girls. So it turns out that Gracie, even though she loved that Max knew that she was a mermaid, she really started to struggle with being no ordinary girl. And we find out that the reason Emma found her necklace at the bottom of the moon pool uh, at the beginning of season one is because Gracie was just over being a mermaid and threw it down there. And we get some hints that Gracie either died or like something happened to her. Gracie Code Part 2. Charlotte calls Cleo's house to find Lewis and Lewis is there. Charlotte? You were meant to meet me half an hour ago. The juice net. Ah, oh, that's right. Sorry, I um... Oh, you should have called me. Ah, oh, yeah, I, um, I turned it off. I've been working on something really important. Lewis, how much longer are you going to be? Probably another half an hour and then I'll... Or I can leave straight away. Yep. Okay, bye. I'll go through this later. I just, I lost track of time. What were you doing at Cleo's that made you lose track of time? Lewis, can't you see how this makes me feel? How what makes you feel? You spend all your time with them. Three girls. I think I wasn't your girlfriend. Charlotte, we've been through this. They are just my friends. Yeah. It makes me feel weird. Well, it shouldn't. So embarrassing, so embarrassing. Like this is my villain origin story and I, it's not even happening to me. And this is where things just start to get real weird. Charlotte comes over to ask Cleo why she's hanging around Lewis so much. And that's when she happens to notice a picture of Gracie hung up. And it turns out Gracie is Charlotte's grandmother, which yeah, can you imagine if you go over to your boyfriend's ex's house and they just have a picture of your grandmother? Like that's actually kind of scary. Um, but Lewis gaslights Charlotte into thinking Gracie isn't wearing the same locket that Cleo is wearing. Such a freaky coincidence. Cleo having this photo. Coincidences are part of the fabric of the universe. Lewis, the locket. What? Cleo, Ricky and Emma wear the same locket that my grandmother wore. Ah, oh, there's a similarity. But they're exactly the same. Don't you think that's bizarre? Not really. I bet everybody wore them back then. I bet you they were mass produced. And Cleo and the girls, they just, they love that antique stuff. Which again, Lewis is trying to keep the secret, but oh man. Also in this episode, Emma tells Ash that she has some sort of trauma around water and that's why she doesn't go near it. And so he decides the best way to deal with that is to just try and throw her in the ocean. Here we go. Ash, what are you doing? Okay. Ash, no, turn around, please. It's okay, it's okay. Ash, 
No! Even if she wasn't a roommate, that's not what you do for someone. <laughs> and I would have slapped a man if he picked me up without my permission. I hate that. For a moment, it looks like Emma is considering just telling Ash that she's a mermaid, um, which she eventually decides against because there are more people walking past, but I don't know, he doesn't respect your boundaries, it just does not seem worth it to me to tell him. Back to Charlotte. Charlotte talks to Hillary Clinton about her mother, Gracie, and since Charlotte is getting suspicious, she comes back to Cleo's house while Cleo isn't there and convinces Kim with the power of her eyebrows to let her sneak it. Don't suppose I could just go up to her room and get it? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Cleo would probably hate someone going into her room while she wasn't there. Wouldn't she? Hmm. Brittany really just put her all into this eyebrow performance, and we just have to appreciate the art form. But when she sneaks into Cleo's room, she finds a film reel, which of course has high def, 4K, undeniable proof that Gracie was a mermaid. It's actually ridiculous how high quality this footage is. Like, how much was a the camera then? Of course, because he kind of has to at this point, Lewis continues to gaslight Charlotte. There is no such thing as mermaids. Lewis, you saw the film with your own eyes. This is crazy. She always used to tell me stories about the sea. Now I know why. Why? Because she's a, a mythical sea creature. I just wish I could have spent more time with her. So that's what this is all about. What? Well, you miss her. You miss her so much that you broke into Cleo's room, you stole the film, just so you could learn more about her. Yeah, but what if it was real? What would that make me? It doesn't make you anything. Well. So 21, and then there were four. I'm sure Charlotte has forgotten all about her grandma being a mermaid. <laughs> Can't stop thinking about mermaids. Whoops. Okay, well, come on. Why is it so important? I just want to know who she was. That's all. Okay, well, I just think... I think you're looking for something that isn't there. What about all those old stories you used to tell me? About the sea? That's all they were. They were just stories. Didn't people say she was a bit crazy? Great thing to say about your girlfriend's dead grandma, even if you are trying to keep a secret. Charlotte already knows that the guy in the footage is named Max. And because Lewis is stupid, she just follows Lewis going to Max. What if he blabs? He won't blab. Okay, I gave him back all of his research. He won't talk to anyone. Are you absolutely sure? Trust me, I know Max, and he is a tough nut to crack. She was my grandmother. Is she really a mermaid? Yes, she really was a mermaid. You lied to me, Lewis. Sorry? You knew all along. You what? You what? The Gracie's a mermaid. Charlotte, we've been through this. This is ridiculous. The film. I mean, look, it's obviously a fake. I talked to Max. Lois, you knew my grandmother was a mermaid. Why would you keep that a secret from me? Charlotte, I can't tell you anything. Do you still want to be with me, Lois? Yes. Well, then why can't you just be honest? Why are you still lying to me? <sighs> no, no, no more lies, Lewis. No more cover-ups. Just tell me what is going on. I can't. I so. Charlotte, wait. Honestly, Charlotte, what do you see in Lewis at this point? Like, he is just straight up not nice to you. And then Charlotte goes to Mako Island in the moon pool to see if she can find out more. And of course, as she's there, the whole gang scrolls up and they're like, gosh, you know what I love about being a mermaid? No, what do you love about being a mermaid? I just love being a mermaid, blah, 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 blah. And they immediately leave afterwards too. You know what the best thing about being a mermaid is? Going slow over the reef. Are you kidding? <laughs> Going fast is so much better. Listen to you two. You sound like you're on some corny TV commercial. I want to call Lois, just in case we need his help. You know with the moon. Incredible writing, I have to say. Cleo was like, Lewis, you're a great guy, which this season, no. No, he's not, Cleo, okay? You're also not great. Then we cut to Charlotte becoming a mermaid. In the right place, at the right time, magic happens. Yes, I did scream when I watched this as a child, probably. It was a painful moment for all of us. Episode 22, Bubble Bubble, Boil, and Trouble. This episode has like a horror movie intro.
Lewis has to deal with this somehow. After all, it is his fault. My fault? How is it my fault? Don't make me state the obvious thoughts. Oh, well, I don't think we need to play the blame game, Ricky. It is Lewis's fault. I agree, Ricky. I want you to promise me. No more secrets. Sure, yeah, okay. No more secrets, I promise. The groom is says it all, huh? But the girls need to do beach volleyball to pass phys ed, and Charlotte volunteers to compete with them. And they show Charlotte their powers, but Charlotte doesn't quite know what her powers are yet. Yeah, I agree, Cleo. Charlotte's not that bad. She's smart and easygoing and bubbly. I like her eyebrows. Me too, Cleo. Me too. For once, Lewis actually says something nice to Charlotte. They don't like me. I like you. You just, you need to be patient. Give them time. They've had time. They're used to each other. And you're new. It's only natural that they're going to be a bit distant at first. Charlotte finds out her power and shows it off to everyone, but I'm honestly just looking at her eyebrows the entire time. say that? I just moved water. That's my power. I know. We can share. Yikes. But then Charlotte gets hit with water and she realizes that not only does she have Cleo's powers, she can boil herself too. Turns out Charlotte has all of their powers. Yeah. Yeah, this is right. This is fine. I'm sure it'll all go fine. Episode 23, Reckless. <laughs> Lewis manages to destroy Nate's jet ski. <laughs> oh, that's not good. You broke my jet ski! Whatever. You are so lucky that my fishing rod's okay. It's, it's very expensive and it's top of the line, unlike your clapped out lawnmower that you ride, or used to ride around. Fuck you, Brennan! I know you touched my drum set, and I want to hear that dirty little mouth admit it. Get out of my face! My fishing lure! Yes! My petty king, Lewis. But Nate is not giving up on this jet ski thing. Jet ski thing. And he says he wants payment right away and he is not messing around. Pay up, well, that's what I'm gonna do to your head. What's going on? So Charlotte decides to use her powers to torture Nate, and we get some major hand grippy acting. It all just reminds me of like those clips of the <laughs> filming of the Avengers where Scarlet Witch has to like act out all of her hand things. Obviously we love the special effects and it just looks so goofy. I love it. But Charlotte decides that this is it. From now on she's doing things her way, which I'm sure won't lead to any evil shenanigans whatsoever. Episode 24, Three's Company. Lewis's birthday's coming up. Oh yeah, I've got a really good idea. Yeah, so have I. No, you're gonna love this. A party boat. No, no, no. no. Those party boats are lame. What we should do is throw a surprise party. How about a surprise party on a party boat? But Charlotte wants to throw a surprise party and so she has Hillary Clinton cater and she throws like what looks like the Bridgerton experience, honestly. And she ends up inviting a bunch of people that Lewis doesn't know, him playing her cousin's jazz band for music. It's like a whole lame thing. Also, Cleo gets Lewis like a little gadget thing and I just think that that's like so precious that she knows what nerdy tools to get for him. It's really sweet. So at first, Ricky decides that she's not going to go to the party because she just can't stand Charlotte, which, yeah, I kind of understand at this point. But then, at the party, Charlotte gets jealous again of Cleo and Emma, so that she locks them in a supply closet. And 
and unfortunately the person who figures out that the girls are locked in a closet is Ash and we all know Ash doesn't respect boundaries so he's like don't worry I'll get you out and they're all like no no but luckily Ricky's here to save the day anyone for staying quiet? and then the girls steal Lewis from his own party that is more like it is this your idea no, it was ours. Get it now. That's where you guys have been. You've been organizing this. Got it. Well, you guys rock. Petty, but I support it. Episode 25, sea change. The cute Cleo fit is back, but we don't have time to focus on that because the dishes are not done. Once again, they have a dishwasher, but alas. Charlotte tells Lewis that because she's no longer friends with the girls, he can no longer be friends with the girls, especially Cleo. We love healthy relationship dynamics. Lewis essentially tells Cleo that he's cutting her off. Lewis! Cleo. Look, um, I can't really talk. You've been avoiding me all day at school. Well, the thing is, Charlotte's, uh, she's uncomfortable with me talking to you. What? I gotta go. Bye-bye. And while all the stress is mounting up, Cleo's dad is still not letting up about these dishes. And again, we have two viable options. You can tell your dad that you're a mermaid since everyone and their mother seems to want to tell people these days or two you put them in the dishwasher but then while cleo runs out she ends up getting assaulted by charlotte the only reason he ever helped you was because he felt sorry for you And I have to say, this fight looked extra epic on my two-inch iPod Nano screen. Yes, I'm still talking about this. And then Charlotte steals the necklace off of Cleo's neck and makes her watch Lewis put it on her. Yeah, why don't you put it on me? She's like full Joker brain at this point. Cleo tries to call Lewis, and I don't understand how he can't hear this ringtone. Then Cleo runs away. She's missing. No one knows where she is. And then Lewis realizes that Charlotte stole his phone. Yeah, it's going down. So he goes to Max and Max just happens to guess exactly where she is and that she's probably being actively attacked by sharks at this moment. You know, you can't have it both ways, Lewis. You're going to have to choose. It's her or me. There really is no choice, Charlotte. I never want to see you again. Babes, we all saw that coming. And of course, Cleo and Lewis instantly back together. And then Charlotte does this. Sure, she's fine. Episode 26, Unfathomable. Full moon tonight, but it turns out this isn't just any full moon. If the girls go into the moon pool when the full moon goes over it, they will lose their powers forever this time. And this is apparently the strongest the moon has been in 50 years. Coincident. They decide to warn Charlotte about the full moon. And Charlotte does this. We were only trying to warn you. And I'm just returning the favor. Consider yourselves warned. Somehow Ash doesn't really see it. Lewis goes back to sort of warn Charlotte about the full moon and tell him to stop harassing the girls. And you can just tell Charlotte's mental state, not great at this point. We want us to be together again. That's, that's not gonna happen. I'm with Cleo now. She turned you against me. I won't let you make that mistake, Lewis. Ash is back. What do you think Ash is gonna do? Is he gonna intrude when he wasn't invited? Yes, he is. Ash is back, and because Charlotte, again, wants to mess with the girls, and she's got the full moon power, she's making things go crazy in that house, and Ash is just like, what is going on? And I'm just like, who invited you, Ash? But Lewis decides to go out and trick Charlotte into going to Mako Island with him. But it turns out that Charlotte pulled an Uno reverse card, and she knew that Lewis was trying to trick her, and that if they went to Mako Island, that Cleo would follow her, and if Cleo went to Mako Island, the other girls would follow. And we get another epic fight scene. Lots of hand grippies and fast shots. But luckily, of course, they win and Charlotte loses her tail. So do you think Lewis had to like 
take her home in his boat after this or what? Or did they like put her on one of their backs? I don't know. Somehow they all get back. You know, all I ever wanted was for you to care for me. I did. But I want you to know that I am here for you guys, not her. Louis, can we get a hand over here, please? Be there in a second. Louis! Coming! And then, of course, Emma decides that it's finally time to tell Ash because he's been such a good sport about respecting her boundaries this whole time. And for a man who's been harassing her for months to know the truth, he has the most lackluster reaction to finding out that she's a mermaid. <laughs> That is the end of season two. Originally, when they filmed this show, they just intended it for it to be seasons one and two. They went back and started filming season three after they realized how popular it is. But the ending of season two very much reads like a proper series finale, which is partly why I didn't watch season three, but I think also I was getting a little too old for for it by the time season three rolled around. So I actually haven't seen season three. But yeah, that is that is season two. And I was genuinely surprised how different my view of a lot of these things were as an adult. Like, don't get me wrong, Charlotte is definitely a villain. She definitely does some terrible things in the last couple of episodes. But for some reason, I remembered her being evil for like way longer than four episodes. Louis and the girls genuinely are terrible to Charlotte and everyone around them for most of the season. One, I feel like they just needed to take a more like sympathetic approach to Charlotte in the beginning. I feel like they made it a little bit too obvious that she was gonna be an antagonist. And I really wish that they had like made Charlotte a mermaid earlier so we could really like see those dynamics play out a little bit more and then have their friendship fall out and then have her be like this big bad villain for the second half of the season. I feel like that would have been a lot more exciting because I do think Charlotte is a really interesting character, but I just think that she got underutilized and I think like our 10 year old brains couldn't parse out the fact that like she could be a bad person and also have empathy for her as a character because again she was hated by me and by most children <laughs> watching this show and I also wish that they had just gotten Miss Chatham back for the season because I think it would have been so interesting if there was a scene with Charlotte and Miss Chatham like talking about their memories of Bracey because I don't really care about Max's opinion he creeps me out and I'm sure there must have been some logistical thing of why Miss Chatham isn't in this season, but they don't even like say that she died. I feel like that could have been an easy excuse. They just straight up like don't even mention her at that point. Oh, and again, Ash, definitely better than Byron. I stand by that. But oh man, him and Emma just had the weirdest relationship dynamic. I just, I still don't really get why they liked each other. Even though the girls are kind of mean and petty in this season, I can honestly look past it because I do think one, it makes for some interesting plot. And two, like, at the end of the day, these characters are teenagers. Like, I don't think we should expect them to be making perfect decisions all the time. Like, they're gonna be mean and petty. And I did really enjoy that in this season, even the more, like, filler episodes, I feel like still managed to touch on a lot of the consistent character arcs that they were setting up throughout. And so it felt more like a single narrative rather than 26 random episodes strung together. And really, like, when season two ends, like, I thought it was a pretty satisfying conclusion. I'm still not sure if I want to watch season three because I've heard some things and I'm really afraid that it's going to do like the Euphoria season two thing where I not only hate that season, but I also end up hating the entire show. You know what I mean? If you think it's worth it, I'll definitely, I'll definitely watch it. Like I'll do anything for a check. I'm, I'm kidding. I make like two dollars off of these videos, but you know what I mean. But definitely let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. And thank you for coming along with me through this, this throwback journey. I had a fun time filming it. Hopefully you had a fun time watching it. And if you did, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.